Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Today we're going to continue work on the low profile clamping jaws. If you remember last time we left off, we were just getting ready to make a fixture to mill the teeth in the side of the grippers. Let's go over to the bandsaw and cut off a piece of stock. Fixture's made out of one by two aluminum extrusion. And the finished part is going to be about two inches long. So I'm going to cut a piece just a little bit longer than that. So we'll have some material to face off. Okay, this is the block of aluminum that we cut off in the, uh, in, in the bandsaw, and I just need to square up all of the sides. I have a um, 50 millimeter aluminum specific end mill with polished aluminum uh, inserts in it. Now, this is you know extruded material, so it's gonna be pretty square, but because I'm gonna be squaring this up at an angle and I'm gonna be milling features that are only about 10 thou on a side, I really don't want to trust that it's square. I want to actually make it square. So even though this is one inch by two inch, I'm going to take it down to 950 by 1950. Let me grab a couple of parallels. Gonna want a vice handle. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this in here and we're just gonna flatten this one side. And I'm not gonna bother tapping it down because I don't really care if it's down. I'm gonna establish a flat side and then we're gonna use that flat side to flatten the others. And I notice I'm not moving the Z. Yeah, that's better. What I'm gonna do is just unclamp this and rotate it because the way we have this set up right now, it's on a one inch parallel and this is a one inch part by two inch part. So I've faced it down closer to 950. I've taken about 25 thousandths off the top. So if I simply rotate this and drop it back into the vise, I'll end up taking just about the same off of the back surface, off of the one side. Very nice. Now, pull that out, deburr it, and see exactly where we are on width. Okay, let's see. We're sitting at 1966. Mm, 1967. So, if we're at 1967 and we're going to 1950, it means we need to take 17 thou more. So let me, while I have that number in my head, just lower the Z, another 17 thou.
948 and it's parallel and that's the thing that matters the most. Okay, so our 1948, so we're probably, you know, a couple thou uh, narrow. That's not gonna be a problem at all. Again, I'm not taking a lot of care to do this very precisely. Now because we're shooting for 950 by 1950, and we've already established the 1950, I can just throw these one inch parallels back in there and do the 950 dimension. Okay, this should be the last cut. That's good. Now, next thing we have to do is face the ends off square. Now, I'm gonna use a little trick here. We're shooting for two inches because this was cut originally a little over two inches. What we're gonna do is put this in here this direction so that it will square up against the back of the vise. Now, whether it's actually vertical or not doesn't really matter because we're just gonna skim this to clean it up. Then we're gonna flip it and that'll get it square in this direction. We don't know for sure if it's square in this direction, but it doesn't really matter because we'll flip it, use the edge that's square in this direction on a parallel in the back of the vise to skim the top, then we'll flip it and do it to length. And then it should be perfectly square. Now, it doesn't have to be square. But I got a one, two, three block here. Might as well get it as close as we can. But I'm not gonna, you know, really fuss over this. Because there's really no point. Feels nice. Then I'm going to flip that and put it with the side we just machined down in the bottom of the vise. Now this should be perfectly square side to side. We'll check it later. sure that's down completely. And we'll just take another 25 off of this. flip this over after deburring it and skim the other side and we should be square on all six sides.
face it off. That should be it. Six sides all flat and square. Okay, now that we have this part made, the next step is going to be to set it up. We've got the blank made for it. Uh, next thing is going to be to set it up in the vise at exactly 45 degrees. And to do that, uh, we need to hold it up a little bit off the bottom, maybe a quarter of an inch. So I got a couple of eighth inch wide parallels. These are nothing more than just spacing off the bottom of the vise. And then I need a 45 degree angle block. Let's see what I have. Looks like I have a 30 and a 25. That's 55. 30 and 15 we will make 45. Now I'll just set this in the bottom of the vise like this to give me a reference and then put this part in against it. Now when the vise closes it'll square this all up. There it goes. And there we are exactly against the angle blocks. Parallels are not needed, they were just to hold it up, so the fact they're not tight isn't an issue. Okay, next thing to do here is to get some tools in here. Um, first thing I'm gonna need is an edge finder so that I can locate. I'm trying to locate ultimately on this very back corner. And uh, we're gonna use the edge finder block we made in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, uh, there'll be a link down in the description. Let me get this face mill out first. Let's grab an edge finder. No real need to torque the edge finder. There's not gonna be any force on it. Uh, first thing you do is locate the back. There's the kick. Knock it off and walk it in. And there it is. Okay, for these next ones, I'm going to use a tool finder edge block. Okay, here's the edge finder block. Drop it on here. This is three quarters of an inch in diameter. So we know that if we zero up on the sides of this, it will, will be centered around that very edge. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna use the DRO divide by two to center on it. There's the kick in one direction, so 0x. Then we'll go around the back here. And we'll come in from the other side. And there's the kick. So that should be x. Divide by two. And that puts us at 474. And I was expecting it to be 
475. So um, any kind of error that we got there because of the divide by two, we're now centered exactly on that edge. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is um, I've measured this edge finder in the tool holder. So it is a known length and I can use that to locate off the top. So the offset, since I'm going to use a 10 thousandths shim, is going to be 375 plus 10, which will be 0.385. Make sure I'm centered up close enough. Okay, so that just gripped it, which means I am at a Z of positive 3850. Okay. Spin this baby up and make some aluminum snow. That's beautiful. Uh, we left five thou on this edge. Um, ultimately, this is where the, these jaws are gonna fit in like this for machining. And I left five thousandths on this edge, so the screw will definitely pull it tight. And if it's too tight, we can then take off some extra material. So next tool is tool two, which is the spotting drill. And the next tool will be the drill. the tap here and I'm not going to try to do any kind of rigid tapping or anything funny in this mill. I'm just going to use the quill. Now for tapping I'm going to switch to low gear and I'm going to run this nice and slow. And I'm going to use a little bit of A9 on this.
Let's see how the screw goes in. It looks like it's a, that wall is about five thou proud, right where I anticipated it being. And let's see what happens with the screw, see how it pulls it down. Pulls it nice and tight. I think that's going to be perfect, just like that. Okay, that's the fixture done. A little bit of hand deburring with a file, and let me get set up, and we'll cut the rest of the features on these uh, gripper claws. Okay, I've got the fixture set up here. Um, I apologize. There's a little bit of background noise. It's winter here now, and furnace is running from time to time. Um, so I've got just one in here right now. We're only going to mill one to start with, just as a test piece, make sure we've got the program all right. But the first thing we've got to do is zero up the mill on this corner up here. There we go, just grip. Okay, now that should be all set. I was set to tool number one, which is the edge finder, so my offset table should be good. Let me get a corner radius carbide end mill to put in here. And let's load some code and see what she does. Fixture's made for two, so it's cutting the other one first. That looks about right to me. Now it should cut the facet on top. Got a facet on top? Oh, it did. Oh my goodness, that is tiny. I'm gonna have to get magnification to see how that worked. Well, that is perfect. If that were not perfect, if that's not perfect, then I don't know what perfect looks like. Okay, well, let's run a bunch more. Okay, let's throw a couple of these under the microscope and see how we did. So you can see here, let me find something to point with. You can see the round channels been cut the full length and you can see the facets that have been cut on the top to make the teeth sharp, and you can see the relief in the middle that uh, separates them. See if I can get some light into another position here that makes it easier to see. And it looks like now that was really kind of the best. Flip this around, look at the other side. You can see pretty much the same thing. Uh, let me find one that's uh, got a little bit different result. Here's the one that was tapered. And you can see on this side, it looks pretty much like the others. I got a nice 10 thou uh, facet there. And as I push this down, you can see on the other end, that 10 thou facet dwindles down a little bit because this, uh, this part goes down to 245 thou instead of 250 thou, you would expect that facet on the top to come down to about five thousandths. And that's, you know, that's about, that's about what you see.
most of the rest of these look pretty good. Yeah, you can see that facet comes down, the relief between the teeth comes down to a point, even, and the edge just sort of disappears. Uh, if it were flat, you would see light on it like this surface and this surface, but you don't see anything because it just comes to an edge. And it looks to me like it comes down pretty much right the way we drew it. Okay, these are, of course, uh, W1 tool steel, and they're in the annealed state right now, which is still pretty tough, HRC 20 or so. Um, but we're going to go ahead and heat treat these, which will bring the temperature or bring the hardness up, up in the you know 55 Rockwell range, which should make these pretty much indestructible. We need to play with it a little bit and make sure that we're not making the teeth brittle. But uh, other than that, I think these are done, all except the heat treating. Okay, I'm set up here to heat treat. This is W1 tool steel, so it needs to be heated to about 1450 Fahrenheit, which is a uh, quote dull red heat. We'll see if it's how easy it is to see that under the lights in the shop here. Um, I just have a piece of steel welding rod through this, so it'll be easy to pick it up when it's hot. And I have water here that I can quench it in. And it's such a small part, this should be enough water to quench it. Uh, I'm gonna be heating it, and then ultimately I have a pair of ice grips here that I'm gonna use to grasp this to quench it. Um, I don't know how hot the wire is gonna be. We're gonna find out. And then uh, the last thing we need here is heat, and that's gonna come from this. This is a map gas torch. Now, technically it's not map, it's what burns o matic calls MAP Pro, which is now a uh, map gas substitute because map gas is actually no longer manufactured in the US. But this should provide plenty of heat to get this to a dull red, and then we'll quench it, and then it'll need to then be annealed at, I'm gonna do it in the kitchen oven at about 400. I've heard this can be pretty smelly. If it ends up being bad, we'll abort uh, but, and get a toaster oven or something, but I think it'll be fine. It's such a small piece. started to glow. I don't know if I call that a dull red yet. Now I'm just going to start to try to keep it at that temperature to let it soak a little bit. And it's such a small piece, it's gonna quench quick. You're supposed to quench it down to at least, uh, so you can handle it, you know, like 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm sure we're already there. Tighten my vice grips a little bit here. You can see some of the scale that came off. Oh yeah, that's just down to room temperature now. And it looks like the features all survived. Just out of curiosity, let me grab a file. Oh my goodness, this file does not touch it at all. It doesn't even make a shiny spot. Okay.
that's heat treated um, and it's very, very hard. Now it needs to be annealed. I'm told, you know, I, from what I'm reading, I'm gonna go for about 400 degrees, which I can get to easily in the kitchen oven. Let me go put that in there and uh, give it an hour or two and let it cool and we'll see where we end up. Okay, this is the finished heat treated part. Uh, this has been heated up to a dull red heat, 1450, 1475-ish, and then quenched, which made it extremely hard, probably north of Rockwell 67, and then annealed uh, probably down to around, I'm guessing, Rockwell 61 by putting it in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour and then letting it air cool. And I've cleaned it up a little bit with some Scotch-Brite, and it doesn't really appear to have grown very much. Let's see how much. This is one of them that's not been heat treated yet. And there's 499.8, so we're two tenths under nominal. And this is uh, two and a half tenths over nominal. So maybe a little less than half a thou they, they grew. There, there it's a tenth over. Over here it's half a tenth over. So we should be fine if we make the groove in the jaw 501 or 502, these should fit easily. So now I just need to heat treat the rest of the parts. And I've got those all ready to go and I've got a couple of wires set up so I can do these two at a time. So I'll get the rest of these uh, heat treated. Next thing we need to do is make a set of jaws to hold these, but that will have to wait until next time. That's it for today. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying these videos. Comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching.